Great, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome. Um, again, thank you for joining us today for the Giving Feedback webinar. I'm Kyla Gunkoff, a program developer with the Kirkwood Corporate Training Team. Um, please feel free to ask any questions in the chat box. Um, we can uh, also use the Q&A box, which whatever one you feel most comfortable with. Uh, we will have a brief question and answer session after today's presentation. If you are having any technical difficulties, feel free to send me a message in that chat box and I will do my best to help you while Steve is presenting. If you're joining us with Facebook Live, thank you and welcome. Um, so today we have Steve Ott with Ott Leadership joining us. Steve began his career as a pastor working, as, um, working within different leadership roles throughout the Midwest before he started working in the private sector. Steve believes strongly in developing quality leaders across all industries centered around helping people. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Steve. Absolutely, my pleasure. The floor is yours. You may start whenever you would like. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, again, my name is Steve Ott, I'm the owner of Ott Leadership. And today we're gonna to talk about the art of feedback, five ways to, to give better feedback to improve your leadership. There's a few things we wanna to do today. Uh, first, we wanna understand why feedback is so important and why we struggle to give it well. We also want to understand the ways we can improve giving feedback. And finally, I want to understand the steps we can take today to get better at giving feedback. But before we go too far down the road here, can we just say, hasn't Kylie and Kirkwood uh, Corporate Training done a good job? I mean, seriously, really good job, right? Like seriously, good job. But what does this even mean? What does good job even mean? Really, is it a good job that this is only a half hour, not a full hour? Uh, is it good job uh, picking an awesome presenter? right? Or is it a good job not sending uh, cookies to everyone listening, right? A good job can mean almost anything. Right? We've all been on the receiving end of an ambiguous good job before and wondered why it was said. Right? Without any context or specifics, it can truly mean anything. But we'll take it because we love getting feedback, even if it's largely meaningless, right? It makes us feel good. It, it gives us hope and vision for the future and affirmation for our past. Right? It means so much to us that our world today largely operates on feedback more than ever. Think about it. Feedback today is the name of the game. Amazon, Netflix, YouTube, Google, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, smartphones, Apple, the list goes on and on. Right? Each of these platforms provides us with a nearly instantaneous feedback loop. You know, first, we perform an action. Right? We, we purchase a product. We look up a fact. Uh, we, we tweet a quote, we post a picture, we search up a show, we, get, we, we post a status update, right? And secondly, we get a, a feedback, right? We get the hearts, we get the likes, we get the shipping confirmation, the show starts playing, all the emojis come flying in. We love the feedback and it drives us to more action, right? Step counting is a fine example of the power of feedback. It seems like everyone these days is counting their steps. Right? While it's great for fitness and health, absolutely, it's also a near constant feedback loop. Right? Fitbit has really zeroed in on this craze. Um, I love this meme, um, you know, my Fitbit died, I'm not moving until it's charged. Right? It's essentially saying that being fit and healthy isn't enough. I need instant feedback, it's gotta count. Right? You get alerts for everything with Fitbit, right? from hitting your 250 steps an hour, to being active a certain amount of uh, hours a day, to hitting that magical 10,000 step mark where you get a big fireworks display on your wrist. I once worked in an office that adopted a step counting challenge uh, that paid only a few dollars a day uh, to your health savings account if you achieved certain milestones. And as soon as this challenge started, the office basically lost its collective mind. Right? People were getting up in the middle of meetings and power walking around the conference room table. I'd walk into the break room, and I'd see someone marching in place uh, while heating up a burrito. Right? The desire to achieve even small amounts of feedback in a few dollars was enough to spur on new and unique action. Right? It's not a coincidence that companies like Fitbit are including small encouragements and fireworks displays for hitting milestones. We love the feedback. Right? This feedback reality is even more true of the modern workforce, All right? The modern workforce today is, is currently fairly diverse. In, in 2016, uh, millennials led the way with 35% of the workforce, right? You can see kind of the, the diversity here. But by 2030, it's estimated that millennials and Generation Z, which is the next generation below millennials, will make up to close to 75% of the workforce. 
right? This will have a dramatic shift on how we lead in the workplace as each generation of worker carries with them a set of ideals and desires on how they want to approach work, right? And one of the major markers of millennials is the desire for feedback, right? If millennials have anything to say about it, the days of once a year reviews are essentially over, right? If leaders are looking to engage with the current and future workforce, you better get comfortable with giving feedback frequently. According to research, 42% of millennial workers are looking for feedback every single week from their managers. That's twice as much as every other generation. Furthermore, employee engagement or how mentally and psychologically and emotionally committed a person is to their job, it's highest in millennials when they meet with their managers at least once a week, right? Feedback has a big impact on the modern workforce. Unfortunately though, it's not happening as expected. Despite the overwhelming evidence uh, for the need of giving feedback in the workplace, few managers are consistently giving it. According to a Gallup study, only 21% of millennials and 18% of non-millennials report meeting with their manager on a weekly basis. That's more than half of, and, and more than half of all generations say it's less than once a month, once a month. Worse yet, when feedback is given, it's done poorly. In a recent study, one third of employees do not believe their performance reviews are helpful. And 42% of employees would give their managers a C grade or lower in giving feedback, right? There's a vast, vast disconnect between the great need for feedback and actual feedback given, but why? I think there's four big reasons why leaders and managers struggle to give feedback. First, it feels time consuming. Right, this is a real concern, certainly. According to research, three out of five workers are considered to be working in a high stress capacity, citing workload and people issues as primary stress inducers. Right, adding frequent feedback seems to be the last thing you wanna do. However, I believe that giving frequent feedback actually helps you gain time in the future. Right, when you devote time to giving feedback, you're increasing communication. You're increasing trust between you and your team. You're ultimately increasing performance of your people. Right, any time spent giving feedback then will return to you with a more effective, informed, and confident team. What well, also feels unnecessary, right? Stop me if you've heard this one before. You know, we're paying them, so what else do they need? Well, that, okay, that's a totally valid point, especially if you equate giving feedback with paying out salary. However, these two items are not the same, right? Salary is used as a reward for job performed. Right? But feedback is utilized to improve and maximize said job performance. Anyone can perform a job at a mediocre level for salary, but feedback can help someone perform that same job at a much higher level. The next thing is it can, it can feel overly personal. And this is an unavoidable reality, right? Giving feedback is personal, but right? you're investing your energy, your time, your resources into the life of somebody else. Right? You're sharing your thoughts and opinions on someone's performance in a way that others aren't. Right? For those who are not comfortable uh, kind of mining those relational depths, it can feel daunting and uncomfortable. But this is leadership, right? We don't lead emotionless robots, right? We lead real life people. In the same way that you have doubts and fears and dreams and goals, the people you lead do too. They have doubts, they have fears, they have dreams, they have goals, right? So therefore to be effective uh, and helpful, our feedback must be personal. The next thing is it can feel like it's pandering. Yeah, one of our, fav our culture's favorite, favorite things to do and favorite insults is to claim that millennials and the younger generations want participation awards for everything, right? Hey, you showed up on time for work, you get a trophy. Oh, you met a deadline, you get a certificate of completion. You let a decent meeting, you get a bonus check. Although that's, that's not a bad idea, I want that too. <laughs> right, but depending on your frame of reference, feedback can feel like this, right? It's just appeasing the soft egos. However, if you view feedback as a way to sharpen and smooth the rough edges uh, to maximize performance, then it's not pandering at all. It's actually empowerment. So certainly, if you have no desire to help your people grow, then yes, your feedback is pandering. But with the proper focus, your feedback can really help someone soar. Here's the reality though. You cannot lead well without really embracing feedback. 
No matter how hands off you want to be as a leader, you carry a unique perspective within a position of authority. You have the ability to radically impact performance of your people with powerful feedback. Right? If you mess feedback up, you can alienate, you can hurt, you can even uh, lose your people over it. If you want to lead better, you need to grow in how you give feedback. But it's important to realize that giving feedback is not like math, right? Uh, where two plus two always equals four. You can't just simply plug feedback into an equation and get the same result every single time. Rather, feedback is an art right? where every person, moment, and situation requires a different kind of feedback, a different kind of response. Right? It requires leaders to be less rigid and formulaic and more artistic and dynamic. But like art, you can grow in your skills with practice, focus, and determination. Right? Here are five ways I think you can, uh, you can use to improve your feedback skills. The first is this. Schedule regular time together, right? One of the main concerns when trying to give feedback is a lack of adequate time to actually give it, right? And, and as previously mentioned, you're already stretched the max, right? So with feedback, what we tend to do is rely on the uh, spur of the moment organic feedback, right? I'll just, when I see it, I'll say something, right? I'll, I'll let it come naturally. Well, this is a great mindset to have, absolutely. We all know what happens with hopeful endeavors like this. Right? It's like making your bed every day. Or I'm going to read more books and I'm going to start exercising in the morning, 5 a.m., baby. I'm going to start eating healthy, throw all the brownies away. And it's healthy eating. Right? Committing to random, organic, spur-of-the-moment feedback gets swallowed up by the whirlwind of the day. Right? When the going gets tough, when life comes at you fast, the calendar starts to fill up, those extra things like feedback are the first things to go. You see, feedback won't happen on accident. Right? You, you will not make the time to simply give feedback unless you intentionally set aside time to do so. By meeting on a regular basis with your people, you will have a predetermined built-in time to actually give feedback, right? And there's two considerations to make when you're scheduling regular time together. First is this, regular is best, absolutely. Regularity in meeting is the key to growing and giving feedback. When you have a regular meeting set, your people will start to anticipate what the meeting will be like, right? They'll come ready with concerns. They're going to come ready with thoughts and questions, maybe issues they can't solve, right? You're going to have a preset time where you can speak into their life, right? Regularity primes the pump, if you will, for you to lead well through feedback. The conversations will go deeper, right? You're going to be able to add layers upon layers that increase the value of your insight and coaching. While frequency is important, being regular allows for important anticipation and growth. Next consideration is this, pay attention. Right? Building off regularity, when you know when your next meeting is coming, you'll need to start noticing your people's effort a lot more. And this seems silly, but it's, it's true, right? How do your people approach their jobs? What's their unique contribution? How do they stand out, right? How, how is this person impacting our culture, both positive and negatively, right? How can they improve? Feedback is your opportunity to show that you care and value your people. Right? By taking the time to pay attention, you're demonstrating that you care about their work and you're willing to notice their efforts. Overall, setting aside regular time is an important first step in the process of giving better feedback. Right? You can't fabricate more time in the day, but you can protect the time you do have to devote it to feedback. Right, the next thing we can do is be specific and constructive with our feedback. And this is where the dreaded good job comes into play. Right? You've gotten the good job before, it's, it's vague, it's useless, um, but it gives you that brief emotional high, but ultimately offers you nothing to help you really progress and grow into the future. Right? If you want to give better feedback, it needs to be specific and constructive. Right? And I think there's four questions you can ask yourself to help you give uh, more specific feedback. First is this, is my feedback based on factual events or simply my interpretation? Right? When you hit someone with a good job, what you've done is interpreted the event from your own perspective, right? Based on your experiences, your thoughts, your background, and the emotional feeling you got, you've arrived at a judgment. This was a good job. But the issue is that all of this legwork was done right up here internally. And the, the feedback recipient can do nothing with it because we can't read minds yet. Right, we're left to guess the context and the meaning, thus negating the overall impact of good job. By shifting feedback away from personal interpretation and onto specific events that actually transpired, you take the guesswork out of feedback. 
right? So instead of saying good job, you can say, hey, you know, the way you organize the event really helped emphasize this year's theme in these specific ways. Or, hey, the ideas you shared during the meeting were helpful because it aligns so well with our goals. It helped us take the next step forward, right? With feedback like this, there's no speculating uh, what is meant, right? It's, it's specific and focused on exactly what happened. The next thing is, is my feedback based on this person's real measurable behavior? All right, piggybacking off the previous guideline question, your feedback needs to be focused on what this person is actually doing, right? While pointing out measurable actual results. All right, this is particularly important when the feedback is negative, right? No one likes giving negative feedback, but we have to do it at times, All right? Our goal with giving feedback is to help someone grow and progress past where they've been. But by simply saying, wow, you did a terrible job here, you give them nothing specific to work from. Instead, if your feedback can point out a pattern of action and results, your recipient can actually make real changes. So for example, instead of saying terrible job, you could say something like, hey, it seems that each time you forget to notify your customers that you've scheduled a meeting with them, they don't show up. So how can we fix this? Right, so while this example sounds silly, uh, it highlights an important point. This person now knows what they need to do, right, or, or where they can focus their attention. Right? They've received feedback on a specific action, and now they know what they can do to fix it. Which leads us to our next question. Can the recipient actually do something with my feedback? Right? Can they use it to make real changes, or is it out of their control? Right? Feedback that doesn't, make, that doesn't help someone grow is really useless. Uh, if you only give feedback to check a box, don't give it at all. Right, in a silly example, poor feedback would be, uh, hey, your outdoor event went really bad and really poorly because it rained. Well, that's unhelpful, right? Because it offers no pathway forward and it's completely out of their hand. Like they can't control the rain. But better feedback would be this, your outdoor event went poorly because you failed to plan in the event of rain. So what could you have done differently in the future? Right, it gives you and the recipient a talking point, an opportunity for this person to grow and a real pathway forward to better performance. And the last question to ask yourself is, am I just puffing up or tearing down this person? In an effort to be specific and constructive, some leaders tend to simply resort to overly positive or overly negative feedback, right? Often this is used as a defense mechanism for the leader. Um, either the leader is afraid of confrontation, which is a lot of times the case, and they resort to overly positive feedback, right? Or uh, because the leader sometimes uses fear and control to lead, they resort to giving overly negative feedback. Right? Either way, drastically impacts the value of feedback for this recipient. Right? When you simply puff someone up with lofty praise, you can limit constructive growth. Right? You can simply maintain the negative performance this person has. You can ultimately harm your workplace culture. Right? Similarly, if you uh, are simply tearing someone down with your feedback at, at, in an effort to control and to promote fear, uh, what could happen is that you can harm morale. Right? You can diminish employee engagement and you can ultimately impact the long-term success of your organization. Right? Leaders need to find that sweet spot between the two extremes, weaving the two types of feedback together to provide a constructive, helpful overall look at performance. It's okay to offer negative feedback, certainly, just as long as you maintain that healthy balance. Overall, when your feedback is specific and constructive, you're starting to really help your people and not just check a box, which ultimately helps you and your organization. It leads us to our next way we can improve feedback. We want to tie feedback to your workplace culture. So what kind of feedback should leaders actually give, right? This may seem like an obvious question on the surface. It's performance, right? Right? Oh, absolutely. But on what aspects of one's performance should we focus? Right? Our performance has so many moving parts that to filter out the most important aspect can be difficult, right? What's the leader to do then? Well, you should tie your feedback back to your organization's workplace culture. Workplace culture is the collection of behaviors, systems, and practices of an organization, all guided by an overarching set of core values, right? Culture helps employees decide how to act, how to treat one another, how to approach work, how to value and serve customers, what success looks like in the workplace, and so on, right? Culture helps us understand how we should live life at work. Right? The more employees buy into culture, the more employees align their actions to match the culture. So when your feedback is tied back to who you want to be as an organization, you're helping people learn and understand what matters most to your organization. 
In other words, by crafting your feedback around the cultural norms of your workplace, you're pointing them in the direction the organization wants them to go. So for example, if your culture emphasizes the customer experience, then you'll want to focus your feedback on how the employee treats the customer. To leave this crucial element out would de-emphasize the value of customer service. But by giving feedback on it, and specific and constructive feedback on it, the employee will be looking to either replicate or adjust the performance to better serve customers. Right? As you're searching out how to best get feedback, consider what your organization cares about and then focus your feedback energy there. The next way uh, we can give better feedback is to be transparent. Okay? In a recent study, the top factor in employee engagement and happiness uh, in the workplace was leadership transparency. Right? Furthermore, leaders and managers who are transparent are considered to be more trustworthy and, and effective in the eyes of their employees. Right? In, in a world filled with PR spin, untrustworthy reviews, bots, false advertising, and a general kind of distrust in the world, employees are craving transparency. Right? Being transparent means to uh, be open and honest, uh, whether it be uh, something positive or negative, in a way that's accessible to others. Being forthright without sugarcoating it or spinning it. Transparency when giving feedback is a must. And this is the reason why. Giving and receiving feedback is an inherently intimate exercise. The recipient is inviting you into a potentially sensitive space, allowing you to speak truth to an area of continued weakness or perpetual growth, right? No one likes to be called out or criticized or corrected. Um, so you hold a lot of power as the feedback giver. If you should then shield the truth or alter it for the sake of your own personal comfort, you're doing more harm than good. When you aren't transparent with negative feedback, you're delaying the possibility of future growth, which you've also discussed already. But transparency also applies to positive feedback, right? If you're unwilling to be honest about someone's positive performance out of fear of being too effusive or losing control or power, you're only serving to mislead this person ultimately. When you aren't transparent with your people, you're essentially telling them that you can't trust them with the truth. Right. Assuming you've surrounded yourself with the right people, why not trust them? They probably know the truth already. So by sharing transparent feedback, you are putting yourself in a position to help them figure it out. So don't withhold the opportunity to embrace new growth and change. Instead, be honest and go from there. And the, the, the final way you can grow and, and give better feedback is prioritize what you share. Finally, not all feedback is created equal. Okay, as a leader, you need to prioritize the type of feedback you're going to give. Everyone is busy, we've determined that, right? So dividing, uh, diving into the minutia of one's performance isn't practical. So the feedback you do give needs to pack the biggest punch. So in an effort to prioritize your feedback, ask the following question. If the feedback I give is actually taken to heart by the recipient, what would I need to say to make the biggest impact? What happens if when you give someone feedback, they actually do something about it? What would you say then? <laughs> Now, the idea of biggest impact it may be vague in and of itself, but when you start to compare different pieces of feedback to one another, the biggest impact tends to rise to the top. For example, when commenting on someone's uh, work presentation, what makes a bigger impact? Uh, speaking on the content of someone's presentation or uh, commenting on the design of the slideshow? Right, well, co content maybe seems obvious, but what if the colors are really crazy, you can't read anything, or the font's too small? Either way, when you prioritize, you're helping the recipient order his or her thinking. Now they know what to, to go after and attack and focus on. Also, prioritizing feedback doesn't mean you need to leave behind certain pieces of feedback, right? Uh, just because you're not saying one thing doesn't mean it's gone forever. Uh, rather, look to layer your feedback over time, right? Uh, if, assuming you have regular scheduled meetings with your people, you're always gonna have another opportunity to share feedback, right? So start with the most pressing and impactful thing and then the next time, layer in the next piece, right? By layering in feedback, you can build a larger performance narrative, right? This helps the, the, the feedback recipient know how to more fully respond, which improves the long-term growth, right? You're trying to help them see the bigger picture. Now, if you haven't been giving feedback or, or helpful feedback or feedback at all, Right? or if you only focus on the once a year review, it can feel daunting to start making the shift towards giving better feedback.
Like, where do you even start? I think there's three things, three action steps you can take right now to kickstart your improvement. The first is start now. I right, don't wait to get feedback. Don't wait for that perfect moment uh, when everything, the stars align and everyone's in the same place in the same time. Like, especially during this pandemic, we can't do that, right? So as soon as we're done here, turn around, go find someone, call somebody up, text somebody and tell them how they're doing. It doesn't have to be a special event or a scheduled meeting or something monumental, just start. I right, give someone around you specific, genuine feedback that helps them grow right now. Don't wait for them to come to you, right? As a leader, take initiative and go to them. Also, start small. This is maybe the, the, the most difficult thing for people because they feel like their feedback has to be this profound, life-changing advice. Um, something that'll go in a, a quote book somewhere on uh, Barnes and Noble shelves, right? Your feedback doesn't have to be profound, right? That's okay. It doesn't have to be profound. Start small with small pieces of feedback. Because here's the deal. You will never know the true value of the feedback you give, big or small. Right? I'm sure that all of you can think of a time when, something, when someone said something to you that was seemingly small to them, but made a huge impact in your life. Right? Starting small gives you the, a chance to try feedback out, right? Get comfortable with the language of feedback, of giving it uh, on a more frequent basis. It allows you to ultimately build to more important feedback. Finally, practice everywhere. Practice giving feedback everywhere you go. Right? If you want to get better at it, you have to practice no matter where you are, whether you're the leader or not. Okay? Truly, you can give feedback anywhere. Right? We're giving feedback on Amazon reviews, of when we tip a, a waiter at, at a restaurant, when we talk to our kids, right? when we're critiquing movies, the list goes on and on. We are giving feedback everywhere, so we should give feedback everywhere. Because if you can practice giving feedback in low-pressure situations, you'll be better prepared to give it in high-pressure situations. Right, so using those five ways to improve feedback, as we discussed earlier, let your waiter know how he did. All right, tell a manager at a store about how well and how specifically well a cashier treated you. All right, tell your kids exactly what they did that made you proud. If you can develop the language of feedback outside of work, your leadership at work will naturally grow. Now, in a study of how positive feedback impacts performance, uh, behavioral si scientist Dan Ariely found that even rudimentary positive feedback caused a significant boost to overall performance. On the other hand, offering no feedback at all had nearly the same effect as offering destructive feedback. Check out this quote from one of his books. If you're a manager who really wants to demotivate your employees, destroy their work in front of their eyes. Or if you want to be a little more subtle about it, just ignore them and their efforts. Right? On the other hand, uh, if you want to motivate your people working with you and for you, it would be useful to pay attention to them, their effort, and the fruits of their labor. Listen, feedback doesn't have to be scary or difficult. Right? All it asks of you is to pay attention to your people, their efforts, and what they produce. If you can do that, you can begin to give helpful feedback. And it may not come quickly to you uh, at first, but much like art, the more time you spend with it and working on, on, on honing your craft, the easier it will come. Simply focus your attention on your people, care about what they do, and tell them about it. Yeah, it's personal. It, it takes time. It may feel awkward. It may feel unnecessary. But if you can master it, you'll become a stronger leader, and your people will become better employees. Don't neglect the important work of giving feedback. Your people need it. Now, what kind of questions do you guys have? Uh, thank you so much, Steve. Uh, you definitely have me thinking critically of how I can do better with feedback and giving better talking points for a more meaningful conversation. Um, I wanna thank everyone again for joining us today. I know it's not easy taking time out of your work day, um, especially on a short week um, to attend these webinars. So thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Um, for our Zoom attendees, please type any questions you have for Steve in the chat box. We had a couple come in that we're gonna get to here in just a moment. Um, for our Facebook Live users, thank you so much for joining. This is our first webinar that we've held Facebook Live, so that's really exciting. Um, I just want to let everyone know, uh, Steve, if you could go to, I believe, the next slide of, sure. on your deck. Um, Steve is actually going to be presenting a deeper dive into this topic at the upcoming Business Partners um, Training Consortium. So if you would like to be part of that, 
feel free to reach out to Kirkwood Corporate Training. You can send us an email or you can give us a call um, at 319-398-5623. We would love to have your company and your organization there. Or if you'd like to bring Steve in-house, he does this topic and many others on leadership. So if you guys just give me a moment, Facebook Live viewers, thank you so much again. We're gonna go ahead and end that. Um, if you guys are interested in the Q&A session, we will be posting it to YouTube later. So Steve, while you were talking, I think one of the cool things that I just wanna shout out was just that meaningful conversation piece. I know how often I forget that feedback is meant to be meaningful conversation. So I really love that tidbit. Um, one Absolutely. question that we've had come in was, what suggestions do you have um, when someone's giving feedback and the recipient is maybe being defensive um, and they're just not open to having some constructive feedback? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question because um, I think that that's a lot of why people avoid uh, giving feedback, right? It's confrontation. It's um, it, it's it, it can it, it's it's personal, right? And someone's going to respond in a personal way. Uh, but I would say that this is maybe um, th this is maybe cheating. But I would say that part of why we have issues like this is that we aren't doing any pre work and in building intentional relationships. Right. Um, a lot of times, and you're probably going to, if you haven't been giving feedback, right, you're going to encounter this probably more often than not, because when leaders give feedback to their people, it's often viewed as you are punishing me, right? Or you're, you're coming down on me. Like you're, you're I'm, I'm worried for my job, right? So people are already defensive when they meet with their people. So that's where that, that regularity coming into play is, is so helpful because um, once you diffuse that, and I think part of what you can do to diffuse that is to let someone know up front, hey, I'm going to be giving you more feedback, right? I want to meet with you regularly. I'm going to talk with you more. Um, I'm, I'm being upfront with you that maybe we're going to have things that um, I'm going to say to you that maybe you won't agree with or you're not sure about. But the whole purpose of meeting is so we can talk about it, right? I'm giving feedback. It's not so I can give you a performance review necessarily, but so I can help you become a better employee. So I think if you can preload those conversations, you're going to have a better outcome and you're going to maybe see that diminish as you go along um, the more often you meet. But certainly at the, at the outset, um, you're going to have that, uh, that fear sensor, that fear perceptor that we all bring to those meetings pop up until you can start to diffuse those with regularity. Perfect. I love that intentional relationships. Um, very good. So we got a comment here that says, practicing giving feedback. Steve, I really appreciated your energy during this webinar. You kept my intention, and I am now motivated to take some next steps in giving feedback. So thank yes. you to whomever sent that. That is great. Um, and then we had another question here of, how do you ask someone to provide meaningful feedback when they aren't using some of the best practices you suggested here? So I'm reading the question myself again. Uh, when you're giving feedback, um, tell me which one again. I think I missed that question. One more time, Kyle. Oh yeah, this one is in the chat. Oh, okay, it's perfect. How do you ask someone to provide meaningful feedback when they aren't using some of the best practices um, here that you yeah, outlined? Yeah, okay. So you're essentially giving feedback to the feedback giver, right? <laughs> and I think that, uh, you know, depending on the type of relationship you have with this person, you know, it's, um, again, going back to that first question almost, right, where you may, you may start out with that contentious relationship, especially if this is not something you're used to. Um, but if you are, depending on the, the, the dynamics of your relationship, I think you apply the same exact uh, principles here, right? Um, you you kind of set the, set the stage for the relationship. Say, hey, um, when you give me feedback on this, it isn't helpful because boom, 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 these reasons, right? You're being specific, you're being constructive. Um, when you said X uh, on this date, I didn't know what to do with it, right? When you said good job, I wasn't sure what you meant by that. So now you're being, uh, you're, you're talking about real events, right? Um, you're essentially eliminating emotion from it. You're not saying, I need you to be more attention. Like you're not, you're not doing that kind of stuff, right? But rather you're saying, um, here's the reality. Um, I didn't understand this or it's, it can be more helpful for me if you can say it like this, all right? Um, this way you're, you're kind of, you're, you're pushing the feedback upstream a little bit uh, and giving someone a sense and, and really training them on what they can start to say themselves. Very good. I like that idea of feedback being a two-way street. It doesn't just have to be a one-way uh, communication. Absolutely. 
Uh, and then we have one more question of how do you handle feedback with someone that feels you are both sharing opinions and having a conversation versus sharing what they are doing right and what needs a tweak? So if I understand this question correctly, um, this person is giving the feedback and there's kind of a, um, there's kind of a, a back and forth of we're, we're, we're talking or having a conversation, but also talking about maybe very specific feedback items. And this is, if I'm going to answer this correctly here, <laughs> um, I think that what we're talking about is that, that interweaving of personal relationship with uh, very important, um, uh, like work related to conversations, right? Um, a lot of times we want to build up a relationship with somebody where we feel like um, there's a friendship almost, right? Where we can talk openly with each other and leaders walk a fine line of, of exactly um, kind of, am I friends with these people <laughs> or am I, am I their boss? What that, what's that look like? Right. So um, walking that line is so, is so challenging. And that's where like that intentional relationship aspect comes into play where if you can set the stage right off the bat, where this is how we're going to do it. Or if you haven't, maybe you're working with long time employees and you haven't been working this way, you can start to shift your mentality some and say, Hey, um, this is how I want to start working and working together and leading us together. Right. Um, where you're going to say, Hey, we're going to have uh, meetings for, we're going to have some very specific things we're going to talk about. And I think it's up to you to kind of almost like a, a director of a choir or a, an orchestra to say, hey, and now we're going to talk about this, or can we shift gears and talk about um, how you did with this meeting, or uh, let's let's talk about um, how you're feeling about your project, right? So you can start to orchestrate those conversations to make sure that um, people are very clear about what's going on, that you weren't just uh, waffling in and out, and that and that's going to be on you to be intentional and to be upfront and to be transparent. Um, it may feel clunky and awkward for you and maybe you're used to just having a, a good old chat all the time, but if you can be open and be honest and be transparent, uh, I think people will get the idea. Perfect. Great. Um, if after today's session, if you would think of a question, feel free to email us uh, at corporate training at kirkwood.edu and we'll connect with Steve. Um, and again, he'll be presenting as part of our business partners training consortium, uh, his presentations on March 18th. So we actually have eight different speakers on eight different topics throughout that training consortium. And we'd love to talk to you about that if that is something you're interested in or if you're interested in having Steve come in and do this topic or a different topic on leadership. Uh, again, if there's anything we can do to help you guys, we're all in this together um, with all this COVID and also learning how to develop and be better leaders um, and better team members. So at any time, feel free to reach out to Kirkwood Corporate Training. We're always here as a resource. Steve, thank you so much for your time today. Um, if, again, if anyone thinks of anything, feel free to reach out. We're always here for you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.